Hi, my name's Rowan and this is my channel, The Yorkshire Sew Girl. How are we all? I hope you're very well. Today is Monday the 18th of March and it's my turn to do the vlogger tour for the lovely Jess from Sew What If I Sew. And this is all surrounding the challenge Sew Yellow for Endo. Now, Jess has run this for a few years now and she does a great job because she's doing it all on a little lonesome blesser. So I wanted to try and support her in doing a vlog of my own on her little vlogger tour. So here I am. Now, if you don't know about this challenge already, I think you will do because it's really well known in the sewing community. It's a very popular one. And I have actually made a yellow garment for the last two years, I think. Then this is all about ways, raising awareness, <laughs> raising awareness of endometriosis. And I love that. There's um, a lot of information out there that Jess has been concentrating on. She's been doing some IG lives as well over the month of March, which is fabulous. And it's all about educating people, basically, on women's health. And I think that's really important. And do you know why it's important? Because I feel ashamed to actually admit this. But a few years ago, I didn't even know what endometriosis was. It had never entered into anybody's life that I'd kind of been surrounded by. I'd never really experienced anything. And it was only through just running this challenge that I started to understand a little bit more about it. And my goodness, there's a lot of facts and figures around this. I mean, the major one for me is the fact that it, on average, it takes seven years for someone to be diagnosed, which is absolutely horrendous. And Jess has had a really difficult time through her younger life as well in dealing with endometriosis. So I would highly recommend you bob over to her channel. I will put all of her information in the description box below to go find out all the gen. What I'll do though is I'll quickly talk you through the main thing for the challenge. The main thing is you need to make something yellow. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of people don't really wear the colour yellow, but it can be a shade of yellow. So it could be a bright yellow or it could be like a mustard yellow. I like to wear quite a bit of mustard, so that's good. Or it could just have a little accent of yellow in the fabric. Jess isn't too fussy. She just wants people to get involved, which I think is really important. Now, you make your garment that is yellow up in the month of March and then you release it on Instagram um, on the 23rd of March. So that is the finale. Um, that's the final day where you pop it onto Instagram, you use the hashtag so yellow for endo 24 and you tag Jess in. Now, the important thing as well for this is this is all about raising money as well. So in order for your entry to count, you also have to donate one pound minimum to Jess's Just Giving page, which is all going to the charity that she's chosen, the endometriosis charity. So again, I'll pop all the details of that below. But yeah, you do have to put a donation in there. And when you do your donation, you have to put your Instagram handle into the description on there so that Jess can then match up your entry because there are prizes, people. There's loads of prizes in March going on. Now, obviously, this is the 18th of March when you're watching this and the reveal day is on the 23rd of March. So I ain't got long. And March is a very busy month for me with the challenge that I'm running as well. So what I thought I'd do today is I would talk through five patterns that you can make up quick. You know, you can whiz them up really fast if you have to. So that if you're not aware of this challenge and you see my vlog and you think, I want to take part of that, but I ain't got a lot of time, maybe you could do one of these. I will definitely be doing one of these. I'm not quite sure which one. I'm looking down because I've got them all scattered all over my desk. <laughs> I'm going to go through with them. And I've got five different patterns and five different fabrics for us to have a look at. Now, I'd like to say that I'd put a poll into my community tab for you guys to choose which one I make. But I don't even know myself at the moment. I don't think I'm going to have time to wait. I'm going to have to start getting this cut out before I've even uploaded this vlog to you guys. So bear with me on that one. But hopefully this will give you a bit of inspiration that, like I said, if you did want to join in last minute, you could whiz something up and get that entry in as well. Now, the other thing is that's important to know is there is a vlogger tour, like I mentioned, Julie. Um, Sews her own clothes was yesterday and then Judy from Running So and So is tomorrow. I'll put both of their um, channels in the description box below and I'll be putting some visuals up here and there as well with the vlogger tour so that you can always go back and have a look. I'm assuming that Jess from So What If I Sew has done a playlist as well on her YouTube channel. Um, so if you've missed any of them, you can always go back and have a look at lots of nice inspiration from other vloggers. OK, that's all the spiel done. We're already nearly five minutes in. You know me, I can't do anything quick, can I? Right, so I went through my stash and had a look at anything that had yellow in it. 
And at first I was like, there's, I haven't got any yellow fabrics, so there's just no point. And do you know what? Funnily enough, when I started going through, I've got quite a lot of fabrics with yellow in it. So I've got a couple of fabrics that are primarily yellow and I've got a couple of fabrics that have got a small amount and quite a few that's got a decent amount in it actually, which surprised me. Because the other thing I did before um, recording this is I went and had a look at my wardrobe to see how much yellow I had in my wardrobe. And I would have, I'd have bet under a quid I'd hardly had any, but I must have had about four or five pieces that had quite a bit of yellow in them. So it's quite interesting to see. Now, let's talk different fabrics for a start off. I pulled this one out, this beautiful red one. And can you see there's quite a lot of yellow flowers all over it. Now, red is in my colour palette from when I have my colours done. So I'm quite drawn to red fabrics at the moment. And this has been set in my stash for ages. I believe I got this in a So Hayley Jane box donkeys ago. And it's just been sat there waiting for the right thing. And I do love it. It's a really nice quality viscose and i've got quite a bit of this and the other thing i've done is i've gone through my pattern stash as well and dug out patterns from my pattern stash that i know i can whiz up so that i don't have to order a pattern i don't have to order fabric i don't have to get anything printed i can just crack on straight away so one that i did have in my pattern stash is this one and i don't think this is talked about very often it's a megan nielsen pattern and it's the eucalypt and I think I won this a fair few years ago in a little Instagram competition when I kind of was just dabbling in the whole Instagram thing. Um, and I kind of thought, oh, I don't know if I'll make that. And then I've made my mum one. Um, and I actually really like both the dress and the top version. But I'm thinking this top version from memory is like really quick and easy to just whiz up. Now, the only thing about this is it is only sizes 0 to 20. Now, Megan Neal said a lot of the newer patterns are much more size inclusive. This one goes from a bust of 32 to 46, a waist of 24 to 38, and a hip of 34 to 48. So I'm right on the cusp because my waist is 38 inches. I mean, it might be 39, but I'm not measuring it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> don't all tell me off because I know. I know I'm wrong. I know I should be measuring myself regularly, but I don't need that negativity in my life right now. Um, but it just says it's a wardrobe staple woven tank. Um, and one of the pattern features of relaxed fit, scoop neckline, curved hemline uh, and French seams as well. So one view is a woven tank and one is a woven tank dress. So you can either have a seam down the middle or not. Depends on whether you want to break up your pattern or not so i thought that would be a really good idea because that's not going to take long to whiz up is it that would be a nice little quick mate but i quite fancy the dress version and i'm not so sure sewing up the dress version would be that much more time consuming than the top version in all honesty what do we think that's option number one look at me with all my options when i'm like i haven't got any yellow fabric <laughs> the other thing i wanted to do is i wanted to dig out um Patterns that I'd already got, but also books that I've got that I haven't necessarily used an awful lot. So I dug out this one, which is the second, I believe, um, named clothing book. And this is called Building the Pattern. And I had a quick flick through here and I love this. It's called The Sorja. I think that's how you say it. I'm just making it up, but it sounds posh when I say it. A Sorja um and i love that now this comes in loads of different options actually so it does come in just um a like camisole but then also look at this so then it's in a long dress and then can you see this one with like the tie in the middle and then like another sash here and a tear oh love it and a skirt version as well so these are all the different options you've got in this book I'm a little bit in love with this version here, actually. And the reason I'm in love with that, I mean, I'm already digressing, is because the picture in here is beautiful. And that's the picture there. I think that's really different. Do you? Just a little bit different. But I think if I was to do this pattern for this um challenge i would just do the tank version here and it's like a camisole and i think that'd be a nice alternative to the ogden cami actually because i think i know everybody in the community raves about the ogden but i think it'd be nice to kind of try another um camisole i have made the ogden cami 
quite a few years ago and I could never get it to fit quite right over my bust. So this would be an interesting one. This comes in sizes 6 to 22, which is a bust of 31 and a half inches to 46. So again, not the most size inclusive, but I would just squeeze in. <laughs> I would squeeze in. And the fabric that I dug out, which has got yellow on it, people is this one now this is the journey fabric from fabric godmother and I, I love it but look there's massive pops of yellow in this so i thought i could get away with that what do we think i think that would be a beautiful fabric it's um i think it's a viscose i'm not actually sure it's quite a thin viscose but it's beautiful and i have made something up in the green version of this so this has just been sat in my stash for ages dreaming of being made into something and I don't think I have an awful lot of this so I was thinking that might be quite nice because it's a bit of a swing top isn't it what do we think do you like the idea of that one I love the idea of the stripes don't know why I'm doing that with my hand but I am so that is option number two and I will try and put images in as well as I go through just so that you can see things in a bit more light now another thing is it doesn't have to be a garment for Jess's um challenge it can just be something that you've made now let me go grab something because i need to show you what i mean first right i've got it here it is look how manky that is <laughs> the shame this is my hair straightener like thing container let me get it out now i have to straighten my hair because otherwise i'll look like hagrid from harry potter if i let it dry naturally it's just beautiful but yes this has my straighteners they're about 100 years old ghds love them though and this is like a mat look at this disgusting um where you've got like a a hole there to store it in or you can lay this down flat and pop it on as a mat so that the heat doesn't affect your work surface and it's got a bit of velcro and you turn it around and you wang it on there and i really want to replicate one of these and i think i talked about it maybe in my vlogmas that I was going to do it and I just never got round to it. So I'm kind of thinking this would be a great one as well. And there's loads of tutorials on Pinterest, places like that. But I will find one and pop it in the description box below. The one that I quite like the look of. Because I'm thinking this would be really good as well to do a new one of these that just doesn't look quite as manky. Because that is disgusting. I've had it for about oh, seven years. I don't know. And recently I bought off a Facebook de-stash thing some of this Thermalam 272. It's a Visaline. Um, and this is um, heavyweight, soft and compact, sobel batting made of synthetic fibres and featuring good heat and cold insulation properties. So it's for pot holders and pot mats, things like that as well. Um, can be used as an ironing pad. And as an ironing cover as well. So I was thinking maybe this. And then I went and had a look through my little cotton stash. Look at these. I know, right? How good's that? These have both got yellow in them. One's one colourway and one's the other. And I was wondering if there's a way that I could coordinate it to make this. Now, part of me is thinking just go with the darker one we ran because then if it gets really manky, no one's going to see it as easily as they will do if it's with this one. I bought these fabrics very cheaply from Lucky Fashion in Dewsbury when I went and I just love them. So that is option numero three. Right, let me get this bag of ridiculousness here on the floor. Okay, right, then... Let's go next. I got out my Tilly in the Buttons stretch book and I have actually made this before. Only one of them, I believe. And that is the Freya sweater. And again, you can whiz it up in no time. So these are all kind of patterns that you can just go for it. Now, this is gorgeous. So you can do it in either top version or in the dress version and you can also do loads of different hacks to it as well which is what I really like about this book let me show you one that I just think is adorable this one oh so beautiful and I will do this one day is that one there with the frill all the way around it's just gorgeous now this 
um, goes in sizes one to eight. So body measurements are 30 inches to 44 on the bust waist, 24 to 38 and hips 33 to 47. So again, I only just kind of fit in there. These aren't the best, most size inclusive patterns. I'm really sorry, guys. I've just kind of whipped out what I got at the moment. Um, but I was thinking I'd be able to just whiz that up in no time. And I have loads of this in my stash. I got this in a So Haley Jane box. And then some lovely person who I never found out who it was sent me um, the same box with all that fabric and everything in it as like a gesture of goodwill, like a pay it forward type of thing which was so lovely whoever that person was and it's this fabric here so it's I mean just straight away when I hold it up to myself I love it on me mustard just seems to make me feel a bit brighter and it is in my colour palette now this is like a pontel jersey so can you see the little tiny holes as well but they're very very tiny so you won't be able to see much through but I was thinking what would be beautiful is this in a frayer top and then to make a pinafore type dress or skirt in either the black or this dark mustardy brown colour but I was thinking a black cord pinafore dress with then this underneath would be beautiful but I'm kind of like oh is it coming into the summer months would I be better waiting I don't know what do you think but I love the idea of that so that's option number four and then my last option for a quick make is this one and this is a pattern that I've had um, for a little while not made it yet I loved seeing the gorgeous Adele uh, from So For Serenity wearing hers every time she has it on in a vlog I'm like oh I need to get that made up and I got this I think in a sale at Little Miss So and So uh, a few months back um sizing is 8 to 20 which is a bust of 33 to 45 and a waist of 26 to 38 and it's just a really simple off the shoulder casual top and I love it I think that would be equally as nice tucked into some black jeans dressed up as it would kind of just with your jogger pants around the house type of thing chilling out but looking a little bit luxe what do we think so there's an option and that's the seasons of east spring in london it is and the last fabric is this amazing fabric and i got gifted this back in the day it must be at least two years ago if not more when the gorgeous adam soares got in contact with me and we kind of became instagram friends and he said i've got this fabric and i thought you might like it what do you want it and i was like never say no to fabric <laughs> and it's this now brace yourself because it is bright isn't it but I love it. So it's really bright yellow with like a cobalt blue and a navy splodge all the way through it. And it's a viscose jersey. And I just, I love it. I absolutely love it. But it's sat in my stash because I've not known what to do with it. And then when I bought that pattern, I was like, I think that's the one. So it's so soft. I can't explain how beautiful it is. It's just gorgeous. And it's a really nice quality um yeah and softness and weight and the drape in it is absolutely incredible so i thought that would suit that really well wouldn't it what do we think and that's not going to take long to sew up is it when i had a quick look at the pattern it's like i'm sure it's two or three pieces pattern pieces so i'm thinking that might be a good one let me know in the comment section down below what you think i should make but like I say, I might have already, might have already started it by the time you've seen this because I need to get on with things because I've got all sorts of stuff to do in the month of March. But yeah, they're my five pattern picks that you could whiz up in no time ready to be able to compete in this challenge. Don't forget to pop your makes on Instagram on the 23rd of March and to use the hashtag so yellow for endo 24 tagging it in just from so what if I say. Now, I'm going to go... And I'm going to get on with one of these mates. I'm going to have to make my decision. I might have to uh, just guess or let my kids pick one because I really don't know what one I want to make. But hopefully I will have something ready for the 23rd of March. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. If you've liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. We'd love to have you join us. And I'll see you again very soon in my next vlog. Take care. Bye.